Welcome back to Gaming at Goons and another episode of Rambling On. Um, so today joining us is Grant and Wong. Hello guys. Hello everyone. Um, and then hopefully Santos can join us later. Um, so first of all, first point of call, how's everyone coping now uh, in uh, where we are based? The lockdown has been extended by three weeks. Yeah. I mean, to me, I feel like I feel like it's going to be even longer. Uh, That's how I see it. It's like, possible, especially seeing the number. How you know, it's kind of scary. It's yeah. kind of scary and kind of not. But it has go it is um, going cause, down though. That's the that's the thing. I think we're on the yeah. like, sort of stretch. But it's it's whether what happens afterwards. Do we do a longer lockdown or do we go for like a um. Like extended social so, distancing, so, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, but, exactly. then, but then it's just like that's, the isolation. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Cause like how I see it is like okay, let's say the knockdown is done. Let's say it's done, you know, today. But it's not going to be back to normal. Everyone could like go back to the cinema, going to the park, going to all this stuff tomorrow. You know, it's not going to be like. Like a switch, just switched one, you know, to another day. So I feel like it still will be maybe like a one month or two months, or maybe even three months, just to, you know, having this like, cool down kind of time. No, I think you're right. It, it will take some time for him to go back to fully normal. Yeah. But yeah, I think I kind of <clears throat> agree with that. So, so excuse me, in my throat. Yeah, I, I do sort of agree no with that bit. because <laughs> I've accepted the lockdown now because I'm, I'm, and I said before, I am working from home. My routine is fairly unchanged. I, I mean, we work very long hours, but it keeps you busy, so it's not a bad thing. But I do think like it's not like a switch where things turn off and everyone goes back to normal. There'll be a gradual, I don't know, release. Yeah, like, okay. we'll slowly get back to what we are now, to where we're, we were before. I don't think we'll have ever go back to the same point I think some like something will remain the same like so some like especially businesses that know they can do remote work and don't need to pay for office space and stuff like that I think yeah I think you'll find that it'll be a complete social change and that will continue to remain if that makes sense yeah no definitely I mean like just just an example like way back when SARS happening because I was in Hong Kong and that's where it's okay. happened so after all this time, obviously before the virus kind of happening, even like, you know, for the past few years that you've seen people still wearing masks, even those like, you know, like way back, it's like, you know, four or five years ago, there was nothing, right? That was like, but like people was like wearing masks because they're scared of, obviously some people are scared of the, you know, you know, the jam and all this stuff, but people just, I guess, is get used to having the mask on you know, obviously, I guess, like, in Hong Kong, in China, it's like the air kind of quality wasn't as good as here. But people was, like, using that as a... kind of turning into almost hobby. You know, they just kind of wearing a mask automatically. So I guess that is... I think it's definitely true that things change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it definitely changes people's perspective and safety, you know, and even consideration of others. Yeah, exactly. I think every, every, going forward, social distancing will be a thing going forwards. You know, we never thought about it in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 100%. 100 um, but then, to bring us on to our main topic, which is gaming in mainstream media. Um, so, by that I mean, such as things as like for instance we got esports and so now like um that's now becoming a thing like people are getting paid to, to basically play gaming at all although at a professional level <laughs> <laughs> so like uh the fortnite um is it fortnite champion it was i do remember this is, this is only about I don't know, maybe it was about a year ago now maybe it's, it, it seems close about it, it's about summertime last year i think it was a year and it was a, a british a British schoolboy. He wasn't even having left school. I think he's about about fifteen, sixteen, and he won one point eight million pounds, and it's two point two five million dollars. 
which is a lot of money no, for playing not. games. It's a huge amount of money. And he won that playing the Fortnite World Cup. <laughs> Could you imagine just playing, like, it's basically just playing Apex and winning it, and then, yeah. So if we won a champion, and we get paid for it. <laughs> and we've won a champion a few times. Exactly. You think... <laughs> At his age, he's not even done his GCSEs. He actually, to be fair, he probably won't now because of COVID. Ironically, well, yeah. he's set for life. But like, the money is crazy, crazy money, and that's just for winning an online tournament. Yeah, exactly. But it, I, I think he was saying that like, his mum always told him to get off. Um, like, you shouldn't be gaming all this time. You shouldn't be playing games. And apparently, as soon as he won it, it was like, play games more. <laughs> his mum completely changed tune. <laughs> Clash the Titans. Because he was on, yeah, he was on, um, oh, it's on a, the Channel 4 quiz show. Was it the quiz, quiz, quiz of the Year? Quiz of the Year in 2019. I think I saw that last year, yeah. Yeah, and that's where you appeared on. But uh, that's quite, yeah, this is, like stuff like that is, is becoming more of a thing. Cause, like, I know before, like, um, you can get tournaments for everything now, like Smash Brothers, Injustice, um, so many, so many. But bef- before, oh, imagine FIFA. Oh, FIFA, yeah. Sports, well, every, to be honest, like I feel like every game is now they can turn into like a competition thing. Yeah, like I, th- I think that's you know agreed. But then I, I, I think I think that's changed because before you only had like PC games, where it was like um, was it League of Legends? I know there's a few more. But there's only like a very few select games that were tournamented mm-hmm. for money, for like actual money. But think, think of the other side: if the prize money, that there must be enough, you know, interest and advertisement revenue to generate that prize money, so that there's people, or well, I say people, companies interested in these tournaments as well. Well, it's like yes, the the people do win the, the tournaments and mm. earn lots of money, but you think the companies behind that? And a lot more. Well, yeah, but you think the sponsorship deal must be like mm. that? Must be how they make their money, like these pro gamers. Multi million, yeah. easy. I wonder what sort of. I don't know what. To be honest, I don't know what company sponsored gaming, but <laughs> there'd be so many. So that must be like hardware well, providers. Well, you know, no, oh yeah, of course. Especially, especially now, it's like just slows, I guess. Like, uh, could be energy drain or anything just like any just like any company who want to be C I guess no it's, it's true actually it's probably like office chair companies PC world yeah yeah <laughs> yes yeah. you know or like to be honest obviously link, link about gaming you know it could be like a gaming chair company or could be um, I don't know like a Computers, yeah, computer stuff, uh, accessory stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for it. I think, and, and I think it's good. I think it's good to become sort of mainstream in a way, because it does sort of get people into it, and it, it's not seen as such as like a, um, like there was that weird model going around saying that all gamers will end up like this. <laughs> Which, with, with, I don't know if people have seen it. But it's like that model from a is it Canadian company? It's Canadian. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's like got a deformed back, and his his head's dented from like headphones wearing too much, and his his wrists are weirdly bent because of repetitive strain injury. <laughs> but it, but then but then you get like actual no the people you do this for a living, so that they, they they obviously have like proper chairs and like proper equipment and yes, ergonomic. It's not yeah, well, it's not gonna harm them as much. Yeah, what well, I mean is like gaming's looked well it used to be looked quite negatively if you played it too much. If that makes sense. I suppose it's a bit like the same, like the old saying: if you watch too much TV, you get square eyes. And I suppose mm-hmm. nowadays it's if you pay much to, you know. Well, actually, that's still true. It's probably a bit of truth to that. I mean, <laughs> that, I, mean I won't I, say square yeah. eyes that bad, but it's still not good <laughs> for you to. To be fair, I'll actually, I, I don't need to double back on myself here, but I only wear glasses now because I only work at computers. <laughs> I literally have square eyes. Undo, undo your point. <laughs> in one back pedal, back pedal, back pedal, back pedal. <laughs> Escape. Really, what's but... your reason then? What for? Oh, glasses. You wear glasses as well. Because I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, but like, ha- what happened? Was it you? You was born 
like wearing glasses as well or like no no no, no no i got glasses like my eyesight pre- like like driving to work and i just progressively got wor- worse but bear in mind my, my my work isn't completely at a desk so i i kind of have a good mix so i think it's just genetics yeah. in my case <laughs> see i can technically blame it as well but i think i, I was about 21 22 before i wore glasses and it's only because I started an office job, working like I, I nine, office. ten hours a day, like computers. <laughs> it's I true. No, I think, I think it is. And the, the only reason why I knew I needed with glasses is because I, I started well, I was driving home and I couldn't read the, the road signs. I was like, I think it said Milton Keynes. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's how bad it was. When you can't read, when you can't read road signs, that's that's when you know you need glasses. <laughs> yeah. And on the record, I did get glasses, and I have worn glasses ever since. <laughs> there you go. I don't drive blind. <laughs> no, that's a bad idea, and did not condone that. <laughs> you can you can drive blindfolded if you're playing Grand Turismo. As part of like a challenge. <laughs> like a five star challenge. <laughs> That'd be hard, I think. Mm, Spatial awareness on a track. I reckon. I reckon one of you should try that, like, like blindfolded. Someone sees it and we just guide you around the track. <laughs> Actually, have you seen that thing online where um, I, I, I think she's American, but she's an, a police officer and she tries to play Grand Theft Auto without breaking any laws? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> but if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, um, it's near impossible. <laughs> it's near impossible because even like the the pedestrians don't break the laws and they, they make you break the laws. <laughs> well, they have friends in front of you. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. thank you. But but it's interesting because like just because you said that like um, challenges, I've seen a lot of people play like old games, but playing them like um, with certain challenges, or, like or, or people like going back and playing like like Zelda on on the Switch, um, but they like can't die or or got to go with like three hearts for the whole game. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen a lot of people sort of do that while we're in not that. I think people are going a bit crazy, so they've gone back to old games and just trying to like find ways to keep them entertained or, or replayable it's, it's quite interesting like they're classic games but you impose your own challenges because I, I guess nowadays you have the well for those who don't know is there is a PS4 trophy system um, so there are well, how to put it like achievements in, in game that don't really affect the story but kind of count towards your trophy score so I guess there's almost like a, a, a replayable element because you want to get those, you know, go back and play those achievements yeah but it also works to a point where it's like um, you, you get all these achievements but sometimes the achievements don't match the game so you can get all the achievements and get like platinum and then not 100% complete the game and then so, so you often get people that are like just they call them like trophy hunters and then it's not, not, bad, not a bad thing but then they don't really experience the full game because they're just out there for the trophies just go platinum yeah get yeah. platinum and if it's not complete the game it doesn't matter I know, I know most trophies like say story, but there are a, a few exceptions. But I think equally, sometimes some platinum trophies are there just to you know showcase every aspect of the game, like play multiplayer for five hundred matches. Oh. You, know, you, you, you never do that many those, on yeah, your own. Those, those I hate. Are crazy. I hate that. Yeah, me too. I hate multiplayer trophies, especially if it's like if it's like if it's like oh. play five games or something like that, and that's your multiplayer trophies. I think, oh, that's fair enough. Just, yeah, to test it, it's fine. So, yeah. But to, Grind the hell out of it is the worst thing. Yeah, or especially in the both online, yeah, or, or online as well. Like you need to, like you know, some trophy they ask you to, or you need to get a certain level, like uh, not level, but like you need to, like a wank. Yeah, like reach level fifty in multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, annoying. Yeah, but the, the ones, the ones that annoy me when in terms of like multiplayer trophies so the ones that say, um, you've got to win so many matches. Because unless you've got the game straight out and have, and playing it like the multiplayer in the first week, so you're at least at a similar level ever ever trying to figure yes. out how the multiplayer works, you get people that are so so good, and then you just can't. It's not like it's no longer balanced, and you can't win these trophies after a month's time. Yeah, and actually, funny you mentioned that. I think if you cast your mind back to the Last of Us, and um, I played that game relig- oh, yeah. religiously. And I, I got every single. I, I think I even glitched that at one point in the subway, and I've always. I, I was I played the hardest difficulty and avoided this massive encounter. I just walked straight through. <laughs> like the game d- 
it didn't register weirdly. I don't, I don't know why. But it was the, the multiplayer trophies that killed the platinum for me. And yeah. even to this day, it, I can never go back now because it's been too long. People don't play anymore. Well, not on the PS3 version. Yeah, no, no, not yeah, that exactly. One. But that's what, that's what we had on PS3 when it came out. We didn't have the remastered yeah. version until it came out on PSN. But, but even then, like um, I, so Last of Us, I knew there's multiplayer trophies. So the first week, I played, I got the multiplayer trophies because most of us were similar levels, and like no one really knew how the multiplayer worked and how to do it. So you're kind of more balanced. I got a multiplayer trophy, yes, yeah. and then went to the main story first. But that's because I just had the foresight. Well, what are these trophies? Oh, I wanted to get the multiplayer trophies out of the way, and they were like win games or reach certain ranks. I'd, I'd agree with that is to almost get there early before everyone else gets good because there's so many millions of people in the world <laughs> better yeah. than me but it, but unfortunately it's, <laughs> so but it's, it's weird like, to, like going back to that and saying like um, so a lot of like games do like online competitions and stuff like that so like Injustice we always had an online point and I had some trophies like that but I always found playing online um the thing that determined most wasn't necessarily skill level. It's whether you knew the character and whether you had a faster internet. It's <laughs> just luck. <laughs> so, it's more luck. Yeah. So the lag. Oh, so, the lag. Yeah, for me, no good at all. <laughs> but then I won a couple where I was just using like Catwoman. It's not, it's like a. Because like characters in. Oh, so, for those that don't know, characters in games like Injustice or fighting games. Or like Smash Bros. Brawl have like ranks, and they call them like starting from highest is like A, A star, and like Catwoman's cast as a D rank character, and I was beating these A rank characters purely because their internet was poor, <laughs> and they were like. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is an element of skill in that as well. Like yes, an A rank character is technically better, but if the person playing it isn't as good. Yeah, it's true. True. To test them out to your skill. Well, it's like it's so like can them out to start. Yeah, but it's like, um, but to be honest, I can use Arrow quite well, and he's quite a hard character to use in Injustice. Mm -hmm. Who top players? Was it Scarecrow? I can't Scarecrow. Remember. Yeah, Sca yeah Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Scarecrow is one of the hardest characters to use in the entire game. And Grant but Grant, Grant is pretty good at it. Grant's amazing. I knew, at it. I knew no better. That's, uh, the, the <laughs> first character I picked That's up. just who you started. You started with the hardest character. Yeah. Like, I really like him. <laughs> If it works, it works. But I can't. Admittedly, I've not played the game in no, really years. Right. I think we're so now. rubbish now. But you have to have, both have the copy, and I've got the only copy in this group. I think. <laughs> no, Santos got that too. Oh, is he? That's I think Santos has copy. Yeah. yeah. So only only me and Santos can play. But for some reason, he's he. I remember he bought the uh, as a normal one, and you bought the uh, the. The special, the special packs, like all the characters. The special pack, but like for some reason he he got all those special characters. As yeah, because well. he plays. He pl used his account on my PS4 for couch okay. play, um, and then then somehow he logged back on his normal one and got it all. And I don't know. I don't quite understand whether that was a, a perk of the game or a perk, or whether that was just some <laughs> sort of weird glitch. I don't know. No, no one told the. Uh, <laughs> creators <laughs> <laughs> start charging us <laughs> but it seems like obviously like those fighting games has always been really popular especially on like on the gaming kind of competition things you know just not mm -hmm. look at because look at like how obviously you got injustice you got like Smash Rovers. Yeah. All sorts of different Second, Mortal Kombat. There's Mortal classic Kombat. Games, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, Street Fighter and all this mm. stuff. Oh, I forgot about Street Fighter. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Those but, it's always been. I think they're easy to tournament, though. They're easy yeah, to set up. Yeah, because obviously it's the first, right? Yeah. It's exactly. just a, you know, PvP mostly. So I think that's more easy to set up a tournament for that than like set a tournament for like a, a story game. But you do get like speed runs, so and they're less official tournament. Like you get like um, oh Santa's not here. He can't. He can't tell you, but like he he was playing. Was it Resident Evil One, the remake? Yeah. Yeah, and and because yeah, you're right. 
he was just doing it for fun. Like he wasn't doing it for any other reason. But he did a speed run, and I think he, but it was on Xbox. And I don't know what his time was, but I think it was like equivalent to the thirteenth in the world, <laughs> like fastest yeah. time. Yeah, he didn't record it, and I don't know if he's got the <laughs> data saved. <laughs> Needs to screenshot it. So, which is kind of crazy because like he wasn't even, he wasn't even like, he just like we'll let's see how it goes, right? Yeah, exactly. It was more, but that's just like a challenge to do for fun. It's like like what I was saying before. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, funny you mention that because the, the original Spyro game, I remember I, I used to be able to play that in like four, four and a half hours. That's and fast. I used to think that's quite quick. Like you could do it in, in an afternoon. But when you look online, you're like, oh, what is it, a thousandth of the world. So yeah, it's actually yeah. quite slow, <laughs> comparatively. I know, because I was, I remember when I, was a, when I was a teenager, I was playing Metal Gear, the second one. So I finished it around like. Just under four hours. I was like, that's, that's quick. pretty quick. Yeah. Because, like, you need to go through all this stuff. Because basically, I I didn't even hit anything. I just, like, run through <laughs> this stuff. I was playing the hardest mode. And and I was just, like, went online on YouTube and look at this. Like, people can get, like, almost half of this, half of, like, you know, why this speed that I'm using, like, the time that I'm. I've been playing. I was like, "How's that possible?" <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. But, it, but it, it's interesting because, like, speedrunners are now you, are now being hired by developers because you get two different but types. Of, but well, yeah, because you get different types of speedrunners. You get speedrunners that are like, mm. "We don't actual use bugs," playing. like actual playing, don't use bugs, and you get speedrunners that go utilize the game's coding. So, like, anything goes as long as it's within the realms of the game. So bugs and glitches work, they count towards the speedrun. Um, but then developers are hiring them because if, if although they're speedrunning, they're looking for the fastest way to play the game or fastest way to bypass stuff and then they can code out the ways you bypass or you can skip a couple of story quests by going to a different location or jumping on a rock and jumping over something. Or getting an item and using it in a in a unforeseen way. So I think yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a game called Outer Worlds. Um, and developed. Outer Worlds. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fairly new game, I think. I think it's called the Outer Worlds. It's going to be released on Switch soon. It's already out on PS4 and Xbox, I believe. Um, developers didn't hire anyone to do it, but they're watching speedruns, going, "I wish we hired a speedrun, <laughs> a speedrunner, because we could have like, because you can skip some of the story quests by like jumping over a fence." <laughs> yeah, it's like um, I watched these mad videos of another player. Probably another YouTuber. He was playing Outlast, like the first one, and um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. At the beginning, uh, yeah, it's like it's you, scary. <laughs> at the beginning, like you, you get into the um, the buildings, and then like at one point you have to get out as well, like get out of the I can't remember backyard or something like that, and then you can kind of jump through things, and then it's like walking across like the building like um on the edge of the buildings and then you can walk <laughs> across that and then pass through the whole thing and almost get to not the end of it but like you know i would yeah. say probably like 80 80 percent yeah and you skip the things and then yeah <laughs> and you skip most of it because you missed the trigger points because you walked around them just bypass yeah. it. Well, yeah, but that's it. But and that's that's why they're hiring them because then they go, okay, if you avoid this trigger point this way, we'll we'll make it so you can't avoid it. I mean, it's harder on newer games, but it is still but, possible. But sometimes, like the games, they are made. There's, you know, they maybe the developer they kind of. I guess it's like a Easter egg for 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 the for people and the developer. So they specially make those. Things to see if there anyone spot that. Oh, okay, like you know, the weird glitches and stuff. So it's yeah, like, they yeah. they especially put that to see, you know. That's quite cool, actually. That was yeah. It's Funny like you mentioned it though, because I, I I saw a good series, and by the way, we're not affiliated or you know promoted by this company, but IGN did a good series on YouTube where developers watch speedrun players. Yeah, yeah. And no. as, as you said, Wong, like the developers 
I wouldn't say they're too lazy, it's because they, they didn't have the time, but they knew there was a glitch in the game. I thought, no one ever will find this. And then you watch people who do discover it. So it's, it's, it's quite fun to see them rip into their own game. Because the, these are things they, they've did, maybe not deliberately left, they'd left in because they'd had no you know resources or, or time left over. Yeah. But people, get, players still find them. Well, yeah, exactly, and and it's amazing what you can find as well. And um, again, we're not affiliated, um, but there is a YouTuber. I think it's called Boundary Break. Um, oh yes, it, it takes out the game character from. Well, it takes a camera or moves it out from the the playable area, and has to look around. And you, you often find that there's like sections of the map or unused rooms and stuff with like items in them, and they just been left in there because it takes. They don't have time to finish it, so they've rather than trying to delete it out, they've just left it in there, taking up memory space while they and hit it. Yeah, and hide it, and it's just like it's just out of view of the camera system in the game, and and it's really interesting to see like see how it's done and and a lot of them like that. Some are like just general Easter eggs as well. So some, especially now, people have gotten to they call it a break in the game or whatever, but basically pulling out the camera from the game, they put like random items in there just because they think that oh someone will find us eventually or <laughs> yeah good, good thing you mentioned that as well it's like you know the the silent hill the the, the trailer silent hill one yeah that people was, oh, and then, yeah, yeah yeah so i don't know if you guys know this but like yeah basically you guys know you really know know about this yeah you can because it's a good story it's <laughs> yeah. a great story so so basically it's like um, I guess it's the developer they're making it, or like probably the designer who making it. So they're supposed to, when obviously that you don't see it when you're playing it as a first person, but it's always the ghost, like you know, the ghost that, that haunt you the whole time. It was literally behind you, <laughs> but obviously because you don't see it because it's be playing as a first person. So when you look back, it's not there. But like at one point, obviously you got the mirror on the side that you can see. So it's like if you kind of look through it through the mirror, you can see someone's behind you. But like you can never. <laughs> well, well, I guess that's. But that's the idea because because you're talking about the playable teaser, which would have been the new Silent Hill. Um, before it got yeah. the project got decommissioned. Um, but but the the idea behind that was they weren't going to out outwardly show it in a cutscene either and it would just be there the whole game so you you know for a fact that 50% of players that are playing it won't look in a mirror or won't take or won't be paying that much attention so they won't see that and you'll get 50% of the rest of the other the other half of players see it and going this is a really creepy game I'm always seeing things in mirrors um, and, and that was the idea behind it because then it creates a, a sense of tension between well, can it randomly appear sometimes, or is it like random, or is it not? And it's just no, it's just following you the whole entire time, and you just don't know about it. <laughs> it's a really clever mechanic, I think. Mm. That'd be so scary. And, and yeah, as you said, like even just to, be able to play like, like a slow breathing sound effect it wasn't very, you know, in your face, but it's very subtle, and it's always got like, kind of position behind your. If you but if, if you surround sound, it'd be behind your head, but when you turn rounds. As as Wong said, because you're first person, or in a first person perspective, yeah. the, the, you'd never see the ghost. <laughs> yeah. The ghost is always, you know, always rigged to your back. Yeah, exactly. I also, I also saw this another video of like, um, someone was like using a code or like creating something to make it. The player as a third person, not the actual player, but like. He see it as a third person. Oh, okay, yeah. So he can see what other, f like you know, let's say Lee's playing it, and then I creating another person in inside the game, so he can see what's going on that you don't see. So obviously that person can go through the wall. So it's like you know, at one point obviously um, you're trying to open the 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 toilet door and then obviously it's locked and then that guy's kind of went in and sees what's going on which is kind of super scary because like the goal was there and then like some of it is not like 100% finished because obviously it's not supposed oh, to yeah, let it people was, see 
exactly. So it's kind of uh, creepy. <laughs> but you think they think that's just a play or teaser, and you, you know for a fact they probably didn't have time to to fully imp- implement them. Ghost, but you know they could jump out at you or walk out at you at random points, or follow you around or stalk you and stuff like that. That'd be pretty scary. Um, talking of ah, so so a, a second topic um, of the game is like how people are staying connected in um, obviously lockdowns and stuff. So like, there's been a resurgence of games like Animal Crossing, etc., where there's a lot of um, online linking trade elements. I just wonder what you guys think of that. I mean, yeah, I've I've not played Animal mm. Crossing myself, but I, I do know it's it's very involved. You guys, you, you building guys communities, speak, right? I do, yes, Zelda, yeah. yeah. I don't know Animal Crossing now. I've just been playing Zelda, and that's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it just takes a long time. <laughs> I just don't play Luigi's Mansion. I got the Christmas. We're now in April. Epic games. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I, I do think Animal Crossing. It, it, I know it's it is a virtual world, but you kind of build your community and you, know, you build yeah. a life. It's almost like it's almost like um, Minecraft, but uh, yeah, kind you, of. You, it's not building, but like you kind of talking to other people. So it's kind of mixed with Minecraft and Sims. Yeah, there is like craft yeah. elements to it. It's kind of yeah. I think you're kind of. I wouldn't. There's a lot more to the game than that, and I, I will say that just because I don't want to, any Animal Crossing fans to What's destroy us. Because <laughs> it's a massive game. Um, but um, yeah, I agree. I agree with you with that. It's, and I, I think it's just a nice way for people to stay connected, so they can share gifts, so they can send messages and check on people, especially if they yeah. if, if they can't if they live like other side of the world. Cause I've heard of like some British people being stuck in Brazil or stuck in Philippines. Yeah, and as you said, it's nice to keep in contact in a, in a kind of sweet, harmless way. You're interacting, but through an avatar almost. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think I think the, the problem with like endless Skype calls is like, especially if you're like working from home as well, you have like Skype calls with your boss, and then to keep going back to Skype calls with like, yeah, I, I mean, like you would want to stay in touch with your family and stuff, but it, but you end up having you can be like overloaded with Skype calls, and it's just nice to have a chat and, and but then do something at the same time or a bit of a distraction so like like we're playing like TTA online and they've done like a thing this month where you get what was it 500,000 if you log in or something mm-hmm. um, they give you like bonuses for logging in but then it's a nice thing to do while we can have a chat and then we can just play at the same time yeah I mean like not just GTA but like of course those of different company they well they start doing it now you know, just to help people to you know stay at home and keep it safe exactly I, I do think it's like a a positive distraction because you, you kind of whether you play yourself in this this virtual world but it does kind of keep your mind off what's going on in real life yeah it's a nice it's a nice distraction especially if you um so like some of us aren't working now, or we've been furloughed, or um, etc. And, and and it's just really nice to have a, a massive distraction from that kind of thing. Like um, I've been, I've got back into Pokemon Go because obviously you only allow one walk a day. Um, so I made the most of my walk and spin them Pokestops. <laughs> but it, but they but at the same time they are doing things where like even the companies are doing things that saying. I don't think it's out yet, but it's an update where you can connect remotely to a raid battle. No, you're correct. That, that's true. I, I haven't seen that one. I don't know if it's double distance or or completely remotely. I think, I think double it's distance. On, yeah, I think it's on your radar. You can. Oh, so long as you can see it on the map. So. Yeah. No, no, it's not exactly. You can see on your map. It's more like double the distance. Oh, okay. So, so still. I mean, it's not perfect. But it's yeah, it's not perfect. I guess, I guess for for some people, it's like 
they can almost see it, but it's not there. It's, uh, well, it's if good, you got a gym but... outside your house, and you're fine. Then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I do now. I mean, where I, I where I live is like I can see it. Yeah, but it's still too far away for me to do anything. Same for so, me. Same for me. Then, but then they, they are doing things like that, or, or they're doing things like um, your eggs at half distance. Yeah, everything's like you know, easy to, you know, also helping the the user and can continue. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and so it's yeah. eggs are half distance, so it's, uh, it's easier to. Um, yeah, it's like easier to hatch eggs and stuff, so you don't have to be mm -hmm. so f um, like walk for so yeah. long and stuff. And they're encouraging ways to to sort of help that, which is a nice thing to do. Definitely, I mean, like not just that, but also like um, you know, like PlayStation last week. He just kind of released like got two free games. Oh yeah, Enchanted. And, oh, Enchanted's a good one. And, you know, yeah, Enchanted and Journey. Journey, so, I don't. Oh, is Journey the weird, the weird. Well, it's weird. I, well, I don't want to say weird. Yeah, well, it's oh, I've played Journey. One. Yeah, yeah, the indie. It's like amazing visual, visually very graphics. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's quite calming. Game really, it's, it's it's puzzle based, but it's in like a like a desert world. I don't really sell the game very much in, but it's better check it out. It's very. Is it? Yeah, no. Is it I story mean, driven or not? Journey. It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. story. It's it's very story drifting, and but for me, I I think it's pretty boring. I I mean, that's just my personal reference. Um, I don't know about. Oh, you guys. I've never played it, to be honest. Um, I've never played it. I, I think some games like that are alright. It, it was a game a while back, which is basically, it, it was on like PSN, but it's basically like rhythm. You had to follow the rhythm, and that was how the levels worked. But it was very story driven. I wish I could remember the name. But... What do you mean, rhythm? Like, um... like it was in. You played like music in the background, and you're like okay. jumping is into the rhythm. Okay. But it was. It bounced. Was it, it might have been bounce. I think it might have been bounce. It's like bounce. a weird like ballerina bound. 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 bound, 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 bound. It's like this weird like polygon <laughs> ballerina thing. Yeah, and I never really understood the story. I didn't get too far for it. <laughs> Actually, weirdly, visually, that's quite similar to, to, for me to, to Journey. Visually, I thought it was very similar. Yeah. Um. So, bound. That's what I meant. Yeah. So Santos has joined us. Hello, everyone. Um, so where where were we? Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff already. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we talked about what was the what was the main topic of the, today? Oh, the main topic was been a little bit busy. So that's right. The main topic was um, gaming and mainstream media, but somehow we worked on to talking about speedruns. I've picked up your your speedrun with no proof. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. So I did finish the game, but I didn't do a hundred percent. So uh, I remember that. So I, I got the game. So I would have been ranked thirteenth in the world if I didn't done, if I done didn't do a hundred percent. So in Resident Evil speedruns, what you claim as a hundred percent, it's not picking everything up. It's doing as fast as possible. But if you're Jill, saving Chris and Barry, or if you're Chris, saving Rebecca and Jill. So you have uh, to do the final uh, nemesis fight as well. So. I managed to beat the game on the Xbox version when it first came out. I was ranked 37th in the world, which I in I mean, it's still in in, the, in retrospective I think I was higher because there was a lot of cheating that was going on in there because there was <laughs> yeah. a, only I'm saying this because there was a lot of games which which um, you could see on there which people had finished the game within like one minute and 37 seconds or two minutes and 47 seconds or something like that like that's when you know they're they're just like using some kind of glitch to go through and everything and it's not possible yeah it's yes, just... uh, i reckon i would have got a bit higher than that i would i, would, uh, I think i would rank at least 20th sometimes i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure you was you was higher than that when you told me that you was like the world wank you was you was like i don't know top 
top five. Like, at least top five. Yeah, it? but then people kept on but going. Obviously, on, yeah, I ranked after, after all this, yeah. I do remember that, actually. Oh, yeah. I think you were in the top ten. People, was, dude, not top yeah, ten. people... <laughs> it, it just got to the point where people were beating the game in an hour and 20-odd minutes, and that's when I was just like, okay, so this is where I'm going to try and do speedrunning on uh, Resident Evil 1, because I know Resident Evil 1 off the back of my head and whatever there is that it will pop out or whatever there is that will go. And yeah. I'm going to try and do a speed run you should try and while find recording. Because we're, we're talking about this as well. Where I said you should try and find and see whether there's like someone paying to see... Because like, like a lot of speedrunners get paid now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of speedrunners get paid to do it and all that. But like, you have to be like more... You have to be good. Or, you have to be really good and you need like you need a proper proof and everything like that like it can't just be like video. it can't okay. just be you in front of a video because there's um oh, i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say which people that i know of which channels that i know of but there are some certain channels which have been caught out already where they look at the where they are doing speed runs and it looks like they're actually doing the speed run but if you look closely the hand gesture that they're going let's just say you go from left and you start running right and then go left and then start running right again just to, so that you get this little pause so that the enemy doesn't hurt you but the hands gesture is like seconds like maybe 10 seconds off or something like that that's when you're just oh, like it. okay yeah that, that <laughs> literally not being funny but you can tell that this isn't yeah. your speed run there's someone else doing it so according to speed run you're fake tapping you know, yeah, like someone fake, fake types it, and yeah. just like like actors yeah. fake type and they don't touch the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, or, or, they then, type, or they type. Uh, qu- but then quality. most people that do the speed runs are PC runners. Yeah, and in my opinion, um, why why I don't do this is my thing. Like this doesn't concern the other three. This is just myself. Why I don't PC game a lot is because so many PC gamers that they there's so many cheating engines that you can find online right now compared to um, on the PS4 or the Xbox where, yes, you can get the cheating engines, but you have to go from one bit uh, from the internet to put it into your drive, then put it into your PS4 and everything like that. Or even if it is, it takes forever to load up. But if anyone's been on the internet page for the PS4, you know it takes forever to load well, up anyway. because they, they dropped the bandwidth. <laughs> it's the reason. Yeah. But, but to be but, honest, yeah. I think you're right with that. I think um, so a lot of like PCs, it's quite accessible to get like aim bots and stuff. Like, so if you've played Apex Legend, it, aims, it helps you aim. Or you yeah. can be, be even to a point where it's, this is not considered cheating, but it is something you can do on a PC. You can change the the sensitivity, um, mm-hmm. but you change them a couple of other settings as well, so you don't get any recoil on your sensitivity. Yeah, well, that's not that, technically that's that, not really I'll, cheating. I'll that as cheating, though, because that's just because everyone's just got their own sensitivity. Yeah, kind of, cause, yeah, their sensitivity because some people may want a slow sensitivity because then they can see abroad, but some people just want it quick because when they get shot in the game, they want to quickly turn around and just quickly go and try and kill the other person. So everyone's sensitivity is a bit different to how it is, which I don't class that as cheating at no, all. But the aimbot's definitely cheating. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it, definitely. you can get one for the PS4, but you have to hack the developer data in the PS4 and and. If a game knows you've done that, they can chat on the PS4, and they can. It's it's harder to bypass, basically. Yeah, that. Yeah, uh, but I'm just it. like, I, I'm just thinking, like, especially with me and Wong's PS4 at the moment. If we do anything to it, <laughs> I'm sure it will explode anytime soon. Isn't isn't your fan just going like? My it, fan, it, it my fan, my fan off. goes crazy. It sounds like Wong's PS4, his disc drive thing keeps on making that sound. <laughs> Every, End of time, life. Every, every time I'm playing, I hear this. Doo, 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 I'm just like, oh, the disc is coming out, and then I was like, wait, my GTA doesn't have disc. Uh, how, how is it coming out? And then I'm just like, oh wait, it's bomb. <laughs> <laughs> like now, like earlier, I turned it on. It just, it was shaking. It was like mm, the table was shaking. Oh, really? I was like, That's not that? good at all. And, <laughs> and then it's like, what, what it, what it is now? You now you understand how my PS4 is running. <laughs> what it is is a bolt that's come loose. I, what I think it is, I don't know. Because I need to look at the PS4, but I think one of the bolts come loose or whatever, and, and the vibration is what's making yeah, your no, PS4 move. At some point, your your PS4 is basically gonna not explode, but it's gonna dismantle no, itself it's inside. Wait, we'll do. Yeah. Well, no. what, do you know what you need to do? What? All you need to do is play for it for a few more months, let it die, 
and I went for the PS5. And then the PS5. And then the PS5. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was like, I don't. I, I mean, I don't. I don't have the tool. I don't have the screwdriver to <laughs> fix it. Otherwise, I will fix it. It's just basically, it's... I just need to take it off and it won't screw be it back I, off. I, I have, I have the tools. I have everything, but I just don't want to do it because the moment I do it, I know something bad's going to happen to my PS4. I might as well just let it run like that because it has been running like that for a year now. I would say, <laughs> oh guys, I would probably say a year now, hasn't it? Near now. There's, there's longer an, than that. Like, there's an engineer in saying which is. If it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It plays GTA. It plays Resident Evil. It plays Netflix. It does whatever it does. <laughs> it just okay. sounds like it's going to explode. It's like the circle of life. <laughs> the, the, As yeah. one goes, another one comes in. I probably have to, t- probably have to take a look at it the moment we're out of lockdown. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, no. The first thing, the first thing, once we're out of lockdown, film the board I would games. Say, <laughs> I'll, I'll do. Actually, I've been looking at that, and De- Dead of Winter is the one that I do want to play. So, De- Dead of Winter is a really good game. Um, it is. And I'd, so, if if people haven't checked it out, um, shameless plug. Um, I made a how to play on a load of board game videos last week. Um, Dead of Winter is one of them. I, I highly recommend checking out the base rules and then the um, long night expansion rules if you wish um, and we will come to play that in a playthrough at some point the, the, the exciting part about that game is we've all got to work towards the main objective but one of us and this is emphasis on the may one of us may be a betrayer but you all have to complete your secret objectives to win so uh, your secret objective might be something, something minor like hoard food but it also might be the other one is kill two survivors and then that's a betrayer objective so if you're hoarding food, we all might think it's a betrayer, and you can you can do stuff like exile them from the board. <laughs> it, it get, but then from seeing how it is, like as like Lee said, there may be a chance. There may be it, 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 it depends on how many people there is, isn't there, Lee? Um. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's because if you have two five people in the game, then your chance is twenty five percent, I think. Yeah, it's a bit lower than that, but. But but you can. It's a it sounds, there, that was it a sounds high. And, sounds pretty low. Twenty five percent. No, no I think it's, four card twenty five percent. I think it's higher because because everyone gets. I can't wait. I'm not good at probability, guys, or maths. Um, <laughs> but as each player gets two cards, and you deal one betrayer card in that pile, and that gets shuffled and shared between players. Um, if you wanted a variant that's higher, you can add. Just um, ten percent chance. A ten percent chance, yeah, yeah. But you can make it higher by adding one one card for each player, and then the betrayer card. So then it's like um, one in twenty, f- one in twenty <laughs> percent. Also, one I was assuming five players then, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah um, but I look forward to that game. But though. it's a good game. But it's a good game, and and although there's not a betrayer, the the situation um, is intense because each each turn you have like crises. Not only you got to manage your resource your general resource for like the colony in the center um you've also got to manage how many zombies appear in and you've also got to manage a crisis that appears which may be player specific it may not be um and you've got a lot of like moral decisions like that and i think you'll find it's when we start playing a game when we're part way through it nerves will get the better of you and we'll all start blaming each other and then <laughs> be another so trailer. lethal but don't we but do that anyway? What yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> what games we do that about someone? But you'll like blame me for a betrayal. Yeah, we can't rob a bank because someone can't pull a parachute. It's Wong's fault. <laughs> no, it's Literally. Lee. Lee making me do this. Can, can I say like we? <laughs> this happens every game. But like it is, it'll be interesting to see. Like it's a t- it's a tough game, but it's an interesting dynamic on the game. So I think I think it's an exciting game to play. Or watch. that's what I'm saying. That. Like, I'm looking forward to it. Like when we go out of isolation, we can actually start playing this. Because yeah. sitting in front of the PS4 now it is just but well, I, at night time for me. It's getting boring now. We're we are discussing that as well. We're sort of saying like everyone's sort of gone back and trying to do like different challenges on the game and stuff because they're just trying to find different ways to make it engaging so they can replay without yeah. being the same. 
Yeah, well, that's what I'm gonna do. Speed running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then like when we're out of lockdown, we'll all everyone will go to board games again. <laughs> board games, volleyball for me. I cannot wait and until sports. volleyball comes back for me. But the problem oh. is, like, we're, so, we're we're also saying this as well. We're also saying we're going back. It it might not be like that for a couple of months. You might not have to be do like groups of more than five yeah. and stuff. We don't know. Yeah. Let's see what happens first. Like, I think, it, I think if it gets lifted off, the first thing will happen will be like you. You still need to be in certain groups, like when yeah, you're working. Like maybe, f- like you said, Lee, max of five people to a group or something like that. Yeah, or yeah. for for my um for where I work in the kitchen or something like that. Or up front, like there'll probably be like maybe two people in the kitchen, and like there's a rotation team that keeps happening. So you'll always see those two until a certain amount of time. No, it'll be, it'll be like that for a while, I think. Yeah. Well, still getting through this uh, isolation, but I think we can do this. Yeah, it's not too long. I think we're on the, the last sort of stretch, hopefully. Yeah. Four that doesn't really matter for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got, I, I, still, I still want to finish the speed run. And I'm currently playing Resident Evil Code Veronica X as well, trying to get the Platinum. It's so hard. So you've gone back to Platinum games. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get all my Resident Evil ones. I can tell you, the game is really hard because um, how they determine you get points and you get points in the game to determine what rank you are. Oh. So I told this to Wong the other day, and Wong Wong just laughed about it. So in the game, if you use a first aid kit, you lose a thousand points. Oh, so people are so, <laughs> so all you can do is use hard. all you can do is use herbs. Like you have to find herbs, otherwise you lose points for using the first aid kit. And then if you use the first first aid kit, you you lose a thousand points. And then so if you keep using first aid, then you start losing two hundred points for it. Um, there's some certain aspects like don't save the game because if you save the game, you lose another thousand points on that as well. So oh. that is the hardest one out of all of them because I played it yesterday. I was up until, I don't know, three o'clock. I think this was. It was a bad choice. <laughs> it was a bad choice this a morning, choice. for me this morning because <laughs> uh, I, I should have been at some place earlier this morning, but because I woke up late because of Resident Evil, so it's my fault. But anyway... Three o'clock in the morning, I was still playing it. It got to about half past three, and I I mucked up. I didn't bring enough um, herbs with me to do um, to uh, fight this boss that I didn't know about. I completely forgot about. Like I played this game <laughs> when I was a kid, and it's been a long time. And I was fighting this boss, and I completely died. That was yeah, it. I like I, I died. So I don't I remember. I have not saved. Oh yeah, I've not yeah. saved at all. And. Usually in Resident Evil, what they do is that oh, you lose a thousand points if you die if you retry in the game as well. Yeah, forgot to say that part. But when you die and not save, it takes you to the closest checkpoint. Oh, okay. So the closest checkpoint is the boss fight, right? Is no, the oh. closest checkpoint is you start off as Claire, yeah. then you play as Chris. So you start from Chris from when you first get him. So I got past one area like completely like went to a different area i died in the second area and i re uh, when i pressed retry it took me back to the first area which took me about an hour ish to do so good luck (laughs) so i was really angry so now i have to restart it again because i'm still trying to do the whole game without um saving and using first aid and everything like that talking about um you walking into unknown bosses (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if people have been checking out the um, Resident Evil 3 remake that Grant is playing um, oh goodness <laughs> the, the last episode they released Grant ran into about um, well, it wasn't just bosses it was just like zombies and, and like things you didn't expect and they're like you clearly got into like a panic and it, <laughs> it's a nightmare mm. it was it, a I, I, I understand how you I understand how you feel when you first play the game like you don't know what to expect like especially if you're trying to get a platinum on that game when you when you start playing it on nightmare mode all the zombies and uh all the monsters have relocated to different positions yeah yep so definitely so, okay. so it won't be what you were thinking yeah so, so you yeah, can't so you so when you turn like at the beginning like people have seen this 
I know at the beginning like what happens you know when you get out of the gate there's that zombie there straight yeah. away so when yep. you go for, when you go for, there's that and then when you turn left there should be a little uh handgun pow- uh, handgun ammo there to go through to get into the um into the toy uh, shop area toy shop bit area yeah yeah so instead what happens they give you a flashbang <laughs> makes it worse there's like four zombies there with one at the gate waiting for it, waiting for you to come through. <laughs> so you're just like, really, <laughs> really? <laughs> Make it hard for me. <laughs> Seriously. It's super hard. No, but but it's, then like, it's good game. I was though. saying to, I, I was saying to Grant, I was saying to Wong and um, Lee, like, I completed the game the second time. Like, I've got a platinum for my other account as well. <laughs> yeah. I spent really? less time on it. Yeah, literally, I spent the first time i played it i spent 28 hours the second time i played it, i spent 16 hours to get every single trophy again 100%. <laughs> so it's it's a very hard game though not gonna lie yeah, yeah no no but that's good but i think um we have reached the almost the hour mark so we're going to edit this video here thanks Santa, for joining um for I do, once again, I, I do apologise. I'll try. No, that's right. that's I, I'll try to. I'll try to join in that at the beginning at this time. Just uh, like I said, I should really have gone to bed earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's, oh, yeah. Thanks for joining. Um, although brief, um, and then hopefully we'll see you all on the podcast next week, and we'll give you the topic in that week. And hopefully, when we're out of the lockdown, we'll have some nice board game playthroughs for you guys. Um, if we make it through the board game playthroughs without killing each other, <laughs> and we still like survive at that point. No, we'll be surviving. We're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Wong's like, no, we're all dead. <laughs> it's zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it's me. I don't know. In a zombie apocalypse, I think. Um, I know we talked about this before. Yeah, um, I'm the first one to go. Yep, you're the first. One. <laughs> Grant's gonna make it to the cottage, Not bad now. and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, well, <laughs> it's, it's more likely I am the first. To go, like, I go guns blazing everywhere, so I might as well do it. <laughs> do it there. It's kind of true. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for joining. Remember to leave a like, subscribe. If you subscribe, get the bell button to get over our upcoming videos. Uh, keep us uh, updated on our Facebook and Twitter pages, um, and we'll have some more videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. So see you guys. Have fun. See you later. Bye. See, see you later. later.